Hello, and welcome to the CNCF webinar on the business value of cloud native. Let's see. All right, I'm Danielle Cook. I am a CNCF ambassador and I am a VP at AppCD. Um, I have helped alongside Simon, who will introduce himself in a moment, writing the cloud native maturity model and doing several iterations of that. And we're here to talk about the latest iteration of it. But before we do that, over to you, Simon. Hi, everyone. I'm Simon Forster. And as Danielle mentioned, I'm a CNCF ambassador. And likewise, collaborated with Danielle and members of the work group to formulate the cloud native maturity model. We're part of the Cartographos group within the CNCF. It's a working group, and its main mission is to provide artifacts to help individuals and organizations navigate the ever-expanding cloud-native landscape. Awesome. So why cloud-native business value now? So first, we're going to go through a few, few reasons why. There are many reasons, but we're, we're calling out three of them. First, market fluctuation. So we all know that the tech market has been vol volatile over the last um, few years. You know, we've had a burst of jobs on the scene and now we see a lot of organizations that are right sizing. And the reason is these organizations, they need to be profitable. So they're cutting expenses, they're cutting people, they're cutting, cutting cloud. But it means that it's so important for all of us to be demonstrating the value of cloud native now, because it impacts the bottom line. But as an industry, we don't always do that well. You know, people are glazing over, or the business leaders of an organization may glaze over when you start saying Kubernetes and, you know, high availability and infrastructure's code and service mesh. They're, you know, they don't, they don't know all the reasons why. And so we need to be translators of the technology so that when we're saying these things, we're saying them in the way that the business thinks and talks about services, customer needs, et cetera. Likewise, we've seen a change in roles. So the role of the developer has risen within, or, in, or within an organization. So developers, they are being relied upon to do more and more and more, and they are providing you know, the business functionality, they are making the applications, they are providing the services. But in order to do that, they're provisioning the infrastructure. We're asking them to deploy the application, to operate it, to scale it. So they're taking on more roles than they than they kind of set out to do. Um, and, you know, we have platform teams that are changing too, you know, traditional roles of operation and, you know, getting infrastructure set up is completely changed. So all of these role changes means like we need to be talking about the business value because it might mean we need additional resources or additional people. And that is not a hard one to swallow right now. Or it is a hard one. It is a hard one to swallow, something like that. It certainly is a hard one to swallow, and it's because of that rise in, in, fun, in um, capability and functionality that we've been seeing. Now, we've got a good case study that's come up in artificial intelligence. Everybody's talking about it at the moment, um, but we have to consider that AI brings with it new functionality, and it also needs somewhere to run, and that the platform best suited for it is cloud native, as we know. Cloud native technology provides the non-functional capabilities that AI is going to depend on to deliver at scale and with reliability. And look, there is a tremendous amount of data. Businesses are going to be looking at data, its storage, and its cost pretty quickly. And cloud native also allows us to deliver the policy and, and the process and the governance that's required for this. As we know, AI is a very regulatory topic. sensitive topic at the moment. Well, and, and we do want to call it, this is just an example of, you know, the changes in the market. So, you know, AI is really cool, but we all know that some of your organizations can't use AI. Some of them can, like it varies. So it's just a good example of there's going to be more and more data, more need for flexibility. So 
We are going to take you through now a bit of the cloud native maturity model. And then we're going to work through a case study of showing you some of the examples of the business value. So to set the stage, there are five main models of the or five main levels, stages of the cloud native maturity model. So at level one, you're building what you want to do. You're testing it, you're trialing it, you're pre-production. So there's lots of tech that you're doing, but there's also lots of different areas that you're going to go. And, and Simon will talk about those different areas in a second around people, process, policy, tech, and business value. Um, in level two, you're in the operation stage. So that is when you are moving to production and you might be doing it with one application or you might be doing it with several. Your way of operating will change based on how you're testing, how you're rolling out, what's the easiest applications to move to cloud native first and what is gonna you know, perhaps never move to cloud native. Level three is all around scaling. So this is where across your organization, your team understands cloud native, you have seen the benefits in the previous levels, um, and now you want to scale it across the organization. So that could be scaling it across many apps. It could be having more people understand what it is, um, but it's all about helping you use cloud native to benefit your business. In level four and likewise in level five, you're improving all of the things that you set out beforehand. We all know decisions you made on day one changed by the time you're at you know, day 10. So likewise, decisions you made around cloud native in the beginning are going to change. And you're going to need to improve policy, security, governance. You'll be doing that and you're going to be looking at the technology to support, but also your team's capabilities. Finally, in level five, that's where you're adapting. So you, again, are re revisiting decisions you made earlier um, and you're monitoring your infrastructure differently, you're optimizing it differently because you've, you've been able to take all the lessons you've learned along the way and apply them and adapt. Let's see, over to you, Simon. Yep, so moving on, we've got the Cloud Native Parthenon sitting in front of us. Now, those five levels that Danielle has outlined are all the steps leading up to that, that Parthenon. Now, if we look at this, We've got business value sitting as the, the roof, as the, the center point, as the, the, the jewel and the crown, so to speak, of cloud, cloud native. It's there to deliver business value. And it's built on the columns of people, process, policy, and technology. So um, we, We talk about the, the people, process, policy, and technology supporting business value because while we might be technologists, we have to serve business. <laughs> and we do this through products and services that need to be released. We serve our stakeholders, such as a C-level and, and board. And we also have something a little more ephemeral, such as our business model and our competitive advantage. If you can imagine yourself walking up the steps, each step represents where you may be on your cloud native journey. And each of those pillars represents the key areas that we need to bring up and grow as we support business value. Awesome. And, you know, I really do, you know, we do recognize on this, it is the people, the process, the policy, the tech that supports all of business, but if, but we need the business goals to achieve everything. So we're going to dig deep or go deeper into some of these phases. If I can get my slides to move. Okay. So first we're going to go through level one. So um, you know, we have attended the CTO summit, which the CNCF puts on at KubeCons. And the overwhelming feedback from everyone was that the business doesn't see cloud native as a clear cut journey. So there are major shifts that are going to occur within an organization. So instead of, you know, doing, going here and, and you know, building and from scratch and saying it's just the tech, you have to understand that there's a big shift. So you need to get people on board. You need to understand what processes you have in place that will can be applied and whatnot. So here in this build stage, you want to also look at the tangible benefits 
that you can get from cloud native. How do you map those to what the business is doing? So if the business is shifting and doing digital transformation, great. If the business needs to just scale and they can't scale on their existing infrastructure without it costing a ton of money, this is what you're trying to identify in level one. So here, what, what the cloud data maturity model suggests is you need to work on, you know, the, you, you've decided you're going cloud native, but you need to document why, and you need to un ensure that the business understands that why and what the investment is going to be. So in level one, you need to prioritize your goals and you need to prioritize your you know, POVs, pre-production goals, um, and look at the trade-offs that are going to be required between all of these. So, you know, we have here like customer satisfaction as an example, and say your requirement as a business is to get faster website response times because your customers are demanding it and you have to meet that demand. Your trade-off might be that you need to move to cloud regions closer to the customer versus going to cheaper cloud um, regions. And those are trade-offs that need to be understood early because if they're not, you're going to have a situation where you go cloud native, then business will be like, I don't understand. Like this is more expensive. This is not cost saving. And that is not exactly why you're going cloud native. So likewise, if you're you know, looking at a goal to be more cost effective, you might be going to cheaper cloud regions, but your trade-off is going to be a slower experience for the end user. Um, and then finally, you know, managing risk. So if that is one of your goals or it's a top priority of your organization, then you need to be looking at, okay, well, where do I need to host my data? And that could end up being more expensive for you as an organization. So being able to prioritize those top business goals and then also communicate those trade-offs early is going to set you up for success later. And then within each one of the latest version of the cloud native maturity model, we talk about cost specifically. Cost has become such a top topic that is huge in everyone's mind. How do we save money? And again, like as we said earlier, with market changes and fluctuation, people are looking to save money in various ways. So in terms of cost in level one, you need to establish first that your teams are aligned. So Unfortunately, unless you're a net new business, you're going to be running legacy infrastructure and cloud environments simultaneously. If you've communicated that to the business, that's going to say, you know, that, that cloud native is going to save you money. You're going to need to better align on that because you might have to be running both of those environments. Everything's going to be more expensive. So that needs to be happen early when you are looking at this. Second, you need to make allowances. So you need to make these budget allowances for running everything simultaneously. And then finally, like you need to know that your costs aren't gonna go down in level one, they're probably gonna go up. So if, if that is not okay with the business, then Cloud Native might not be right for you right now, or you might wanna only look at Cloud Native for net new applications and services. Really important part to remember is that those decisions that Danielle has run through apply to pre-production. And also as part of that pre-production, you're not starting from nothing. Quite all, once to get to, to in level one, you're building up a significant amount of infrastructure potentially or cloud native resources. Level two that we're just gonna to touch on now is where we've entered production. It's, it's our first applications into production. And that's a high bar to get to. It requires people, process and policy pre and technology prerequisites to be in place. And we have to be thinking through things like does our backup or identity and access uh, IAM model work for public cloud? You know, there is a ca real cascade of activities to build those foundations. And we will have to absolutely align with our business, as Danielle mentioned, on what applications will we move. Again, it's not a zero sum game. We don't immediately reduce costs in, leg in the legacy world moving to cloud native. There can be and often will be an overlap. 
So we need to identify, you know, where we're hurting and what will be the benefits we get most from migrating. And then, of course, will we meet our non-functional capabilities and requirements, capacity, performance, availability? And absolutely, as we're dealing with a business, we're going to need to measure and we'll have to have KPIs and OKRs, objectives and key results absolutely de defined. And we will have to communicate between technology and the business units. So if we run through the, the squares in front of us, we've got that alignment. Where are we hurting most? And where are we solving for our return on our investment? How are we measuring? And, and, and again, what are the trade-offs that we will have to live with? And many organizations get stuck because they can't demonstrate how cloud native has actually helped to achieve a business goal or finally potentially achieve one that was out of reach previously. So if we move on to the next slide and we take a look at the costs for level two, Again, we've talked about how there will be changes in costs. We're going to be often moving from a CapEx type model to an OpEx model. That is, rather than having all of that money leaving the organization at the beginning to go and build, buy that hardware and all of that networking equipment, instead, we're going to be effectively op paying as we go. We'll have that money leaving the organization on a regular basis instead of once every three years or five years uh, and have that, that operating expenditure. And one of the things this does mean is because we're paying as we go, we can't sweat hardware as we may have been tempted to do so. How many of us have got a, a server that's way too old and should have been scrapped a long time ago sitting in dev because it was really handy? And we will have to have that that alignment between the tech organization and finance. We need to work with our public cloud service providers, for example, or internal, if that's the case, around discounts. Who owns this? Who owns the relationship? How are we tracking that? And cost control becomes everybody's responsibility. If I, as an engineer, leave that server running over the weekend, that's in, for dev and no longer required, real money will be exiting the organization. So it's now, it now becomes everybody's responsibilities and people who weren't thinking about cost before will suddenly need to start being doing so. Definitely. So moving on, we get to the level three scale and we like to call this the messy middle. So this is my little gift that I found of, you know, if you're going on a road trip with siblings and whatnot and you're stuck in the middle you might be the one that's just car sick being pushed around it's messy it's not a great place to be but here's where you don't want to give up so basically your business and your technology teams everyone's bought into cloud native you recognize these businesses across the organization uh and the businesses are seeing a positive impact um but here like you know, the businesses are seeing the positive impact on cloud native and the products and services and becoming more competitive and, you know, managing risk better. There's going to be lots of advantages. But you, you need to not give up at this phase because this phase does end up, you know, as your organization is more comfortable and everyone's getting happier with where they're at and everyone's seeing that things are working well, if you don't continue moving on in your journey, you can get stuck here. And, you know, some applications might be working beautifully, others might not be there at all. So you're going to have a different fluctuation of capability across the organization, across the applications you have, across the services you have, across the people you have. Um, so here, keep driving forward, keep making sure that the business understands and sees the value because you're going to have to train people here. You're going to have to look at new technology and probably invest in some of that technology. You know, small or, or small organizations, they might swim through this level and there's no problem, while large enterprise organizations could end up being here for years because they have a lot of heritage, they have a lot of legacy infrastructure that they need to happen. So all of this needs to be part of the 
business discussions because it's going to take resources. You are going to have sprawl. You are going to have a proliferation of tools here as people decided, hey, I want to use this. I want to use that tool. And you might be using three tools to do a similar thing. Um, you'll be spending a lot of money. Like it's not going to be cheap here, but it, it's, it's worth getting here and getting through it. Um, it's messy, but it's you know messy for a reason. But I'm going to have Simon talk about this graph that we uh, we put together. So it's pretty rough, but I, I, I hope Danielle, it brings across the general idea. The key point is that the messy middle is where we can find a lot of pain. We run the risk of having a very significant set of cloud costs on our hands, as well as our legacy costs, you know, particularly as we're, we're um, in the middle of our cloud native journey. But remember that if we, if we look carefully at this, we can see our legacy costs do go down as we progress through the stages. And we work to see our, our cloud native costs also come down. A really important point and something so critical to think of is that when you're in the messy middle, make sure you work with your technical team on areas where you're experiencing specific financial pain. Your technical team, your cloud native engineers and your platform engineers and your developers may have good solutions at hand, such as sophisticated workload sizing, or they may have some technical debt that if they just bring up in priority, reprioritize on their backlog and start working on sooner in line with their product owners, they may be able to sort of pay down Ask them, work with them to find out what optimizations can they bring forward in order to drive down costs. You may be pleasantly surprised. There are many technical options available from your cloud service providers. You also want to be exploring some of your policy decisions as well here, critically for cert workloads that aren't available, don't need to have a high level of reliability that traditionally we would have left on the same tier of hardware. Does our policy allow for us to go and drop it onto cheaper cloud native hardware, for example? So these are very important discussions to be having involve everybody. So just moving on uh, to level four, thank you. At level four, <clears throat> we, we really um, identify that technology is not as important as the business output. And the, and the improvements that we're making at this stage, now that hopefully we've worked through that pain of the messy middle, really are focused on getting business value through, you know, out of our investments faster and by reducing repeatable processes or automating them. We expect to see a lot more alignment and understanding between business stakeholders, finance, developers, and, and DevOps teams, you know, this is really the time where, if it hasn't been done at level three, as I've just outlined, they really need to be working on just getting rid of that, that technical debt. Think about those legacy systems. What can we move? If we haven't switched over production to cloud native, if we're migrating and transforming, then are we, we should be doing that, that here. It's really important. But we also expect to see a consolidation of technology. You know, in level three, there can be a real sprawl and it will be both because of that mix of the, the legacy or the traditional and the cloud mate and our cloud native platforms, but also we'll have found that there will be, for example, a lot of cloud native technology where there's multiple options that have been brought into the organization. And now you know, will be revisiting, actually, we've got multiple GitOps controllers, for example, can we consolidate on one? Or how can we get the best? We want to be really thinking through some of those decisions. And we expect to see really effective automation around policy and compliance as well. And again, that's really important for measurement. Remember, a business understands itself best through KPIs. So take advantage of the policy tooling within the CNCF landscape, for example, to, you know, to get the best out of that. And at this point, we also tend to see legacy apps only existing if necessary. There might be a regulatory requirement to hold on to them 
perhaps a data or system retention one, something obscure. Um, or alternatively, they will be left to simply age out. Um, we also expect to see a reorientation at this point. We're starting to direct our attention more towards innovation and development rather than having a lot of efforts being spent on support. Those operations teams will become, will again, if, the, if they're DevOps, they'll be really working more towards a bit more of the dev side rather than the ops side of, of the, those equations. And so if we just move on to the next slide and look at the, what we expect to see around costs, focus on costs, cost optimization, exactly as it says here. And you'll really want to make sure again, as we discussed in level, a little bit in level three, that your infrastructure is optimized for cost efficiency. And you should be able to report on this should be quite straightforward to do so in, in level four. You can use a lot of tooling to, to demonstrate cloud and Kubernetes cost optimization. Give your business the proof that they require and show how costs have been reduced. And then as it says here, show why more capacity is needed. If necessary, keep the conversation going between the business and the tech teams. And I think that's so awesome. Like to, or just a point to say, like we've been talking about how in different levels you are spending more. Level four gives you an opportunity to go, hey, we did spend more, but now we've optimized for it. So um, it's a journey. That's why it's the a model and it's a maturity model because you will get mature as you go along. So um, level five, you've reached utopia. You've achieved all your business goals and you know now you're adapting to your new business goals. So we all know that as an organization, you are constantly adapting, constantly changing, constantly you know becoming more innovative. So this is where you have created your, your um, cloud native platform. You've moved all your policies, your people are well-versed in cloud native. And so now it's easier for you to adapt to new business goals that are thrown at you. Um, and you know, the reality is not many people are here. So we talk about it being utopia, you know, is everyone sleeping well? There are no nasty surprises, but you know, it's, it's utopia. Uh, we all know that that's not always achievable for everyone. Um, and here, you know, in the utopia phase, all of your costs are predictable. But we know like that is also not the reality because if you are not constantly looking at optimization and cost optimization, like you will end up having cost issues as you go along down the road. So, um, you know, and we've seen obviously the rise of FinOps to help address this, but in level five, we'd like to think everything's predictable and you're super cost effective, but make sure you're spending time to keep that up. So now what we're gonna do, um, and this is really the area where the latest version of the cloud native maturity model stands out, is we dig into some case studies, three case studies, on how you can discuss business value in the organization. So we're gonna go through these um, and have more of a discussion on it. So. The first example, um, we have Acme Software. Acme sells to the enterprise market. Their entire business goal is to sell to this market, but in order to do that, they must demonstrate security and compliance within the supply chain. So like they're, they're using you know, KPIs like zero policy violations. So the business knows, hey, in order to sell, we need to check off all of this. So Simon, Talk to us about the tech goals. Well, so um, one of Acme's primary requirements is that it doesn't become a threat to its customers. And one good place to start with that is making sure that it's providing uh, signed software with bills of materials. These are really important documents that highlight the where all of the, the bits and pieces that make up that software originate from and provide us the, the means to understand exactly what's in our software. So um, some of the KPIs, for example, that might be used here are looking at, first off, does it have an SBOM to begin with? Then we'll also be considering things like, you know, are there any vulnerabilities within the, within the software? And there's plenty of tooling for that. 
there'll be the time to, to patch it. There'll be code coverage testing. You know, has it been fully exercised as, as part of its development process? And there, then there also might be a set of SOC2 reports that, that uh, are generated as well with that. Well, and the, for a people point of view, you're going to be looking at your people goals. So again, you're trying to demonstrate security to the enterprises you sell to. So your people are going to need to be well-versed on security and policy requirements. That requires a security first approach to your business. So you're going to need training. You're going to need a security center of excellence. All of these things to train your developers, to train software development process, make sure that that's covered. Um, so, but like security and people will go hand in hand. Um, likewise, like when it comes to policy goals, so you need to be able to understand what your customer's policy requirements are so that you can build that into your own policy requirements. And then Simon, what about process goals? Oh, it's a you know, really important part of the process for for delivery is going to be having a pipeline for delivering that software and simply making sure that the appropriate testing is incorporated within that pipeline and that also that the that some of the deliverables such as s bombs meet the meet the customer's own policy requirements so we can live up to the dependencies and the requirements of of our customers so what's really important here to call out is we've just talked about the tech goals, the process goals, the policy, the people goals, example KPIs, that it all boils up and it all maps to this business goal. I want to sell to the enterprise. I need to check this box. Um, and so when you are communicating that to your business leaders, it's not about the, you know, and I'm going to have this and this and this and this. It's going, hey, you want to sell to them? We need to check this box. I've checked this box. And here's how I can demonstrate it to you. So the next example is Anvil Enterprise. So Anvil is the organization that Acme is selling to. So in the, in the maturity model, you can kind of see that. So Anvil is buying stuff from Acme, but likewise, what they're trying to do is they, are, they provide data to financial services organizations. So their business goal is that they need to meet customer demands and it must, their, their application must scale or their capabilities must scale to meet and deliver services to 20,000 locations. So they are going to be completely focused on, am, is my customer getting what they need from me? I, can we scale to meet their demand? So Simon, talk to me about the technology goals. Yep, so with their technology, I mean, they've got to deliver They've got to have the capacity to deliver uh, as required at uh, all times. And 20,000 locations is pretty significant. And it's got to be able to ensure that there is compliance with policy at all times. Yeah. So, uh, so that's the key technology goal that they've got there. Yep. And so on that, you know, in terms of the process that they need to undergo to do that, they, they need a strong delivery process um, for the software and the platform. So obviously cloud native definitely helps that ability to meet those locations and demands. What about um, the policy requirements, Simon? Well, the, the policy requirements are gonna be dictated by the business uh, often or on the basis of regulatory requirements. We're dealing with financial data here. So I, I can almost be certain that there'll be a strong regulatory component that, that the business is going to have to, to uphold. So the accountability for the policy is gonna sit with the business and the responsibility for it is gonna sit within the tech organization. So there needs to be a, a really well-documented checklist of, of standards and, um, and um, capabilities and outcomes, you know, for the business to review in order to be able to report to its relevant regulator. Super important. Well, and you're going to have different KPIs. So, you know, developers and whatnot, they're going to be looking at release frequency, time to patch, respond time, SLAs. The business is going to care about uptime. Like, are, do we have downtime out there? Is that happening? Are our customers happy? Which brings us on 
to our last one, which is ABC Company. So ABC Company purchases from Anvil. Isn't that lovely how we did that? Um, and so for ABC Company, they want to hit their revenue target, so they must improve their customer retention. So I think we're all familiar with, you know, hey, we got to make sure customers are happy and using our products and services. So in order to do that, they need to improve their satisfaction rates. Um, so that is customer retention and satisfaction rates. So how does that translate to the tech? Uh, so... So customers can often be frequently sensitive both to the applications, you know, the modern applications that they're using, that they're available and accessible at all times. Um, and really, there's a very important element that's also mentioned here, which is around trust. We're dealing with financial data. And uh, as, a, as a customer, I certainly know uh, I'd love to, I like to have trust in, in my own bank. And, and, and with the financial details that they're holding about me. So, so as a business, the reputa reputation is incredibly important, particularly when we're dealing with retail or end users here. Well, and so different KPIs here are gonna be on baseline customer retention rates, net promoter scales, customer satisfaction scores. Are our customers happy? And customer churn rates, are they leaving us? So if we are not giving them the tech or we are not meeting this business goal through tech, through our process, process through our policies, like it's gonna be a problem. Um, here, you know, our people goals are all around development teams getting new features to market faster. And we know that if you read any material out there in the market right now, it's all about shipping, shipping faster, shipping faster. Well, the reality is like that needs to happen. A lot of organizations, they need to get new features to market because customers will find another service that has what they want on it. Um, so really here, it's keeping the customer happy. And all of that translates to various different tech. But if you can demonstrate that, hey, if I make this tech investment, it's going to map on to improving customer retention rates, that's where you're going to get sign off on projects and sign off on cloud native. And just to tie back as well to another point there as well, just to our previous organization, we're still dealing with customers' financial data. That regulatory burden is potentially still here on ABC. So ABC are in a really difficult position where they've got to keep up the, the new features coming out, maintain the trust of their customers, but they've also got to maintain their accountability that they have off to the business and to their own regulators as well. So the ability to deliver quality and at pace is absolutely crucial for this to keep and to, again, keep the trust and keep the customers coming back, keep up the satisfaction. Awesome. So those were our three examples of different, you know, how you can think about a problem in terms of the business goal first, and then map cloud native onto that and cloud native tech, cloud native process, people, experience, et cetera. So we have some resources for you. So if you want to dive deep into the cloud native maturity model, because there is a lot there, um, you can do it at this URL. We also have um, a GitHub um, area page. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, um, where you can comment, you can participate. If you think there's something missing in it, please let us know. We also have um, community meetings where we talk about the maturity model um, and a CNCF Slack channel where if you uh, want to get involved, which is Simon's next slide, you can. So do come and join us. Uh, um, we'd love to have your contribution. Um, if you're watching this webinar, then you've probably got an interest in the business value of Cloud Native. And that means you're out there and part of the community. And we'd actually really be interested in your insight and your experience uh, in communicating the business of cloud of the business value of cloud native. So how are you communicating with your business and how are you navigating also the risk conversation? When we change stuff, when we have a tr transformation, there's always going to be an element 
of change and risk associated with that. So this is an area that we're really interested in exploring and we'd love your insight on that. And then also cost. It's a, it's a perennial topic. We've addressed it hopefully at length here for you. Um, what's, what's your experience been and how are, you, how are you dealing with it? So come join us. We have uh, bi-weekly meetings, as Danielle mentioned. We have the Slack channel. We have GitHub. Um, and we would absolutely love to hear from you. Awesome. Well, thank you, Simon, for going through this uh, today. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the webinar. We hope you look at the resources. And we hope that you all work on communicating the value of cloud native to the business better. Thank you. How about that? <laughs> all right. Thank you for your time.